Okay, so that's our absolute concentrations and our relative concentrations. And now we need to think about when we're doing the analytical method, all of these different components that can shape or alter uh, our methodology, right? So we need to think about accuracy and precision, the sensitivity of the method, the selectivity of the method for our analytes, how robust is it? How rugged is it? What's the scale of the operation? Do we need gram levels of our substrate to be able to calculate the analytes? Or can we use very, very small concentrations? And then how much time does it take? Do we have the equipment to do it? And what is the cost? Right, so these are all design criteria questions. So let's take a, a deeper look at each of these components. So accuracy is defined as a measure of how closely the result of an experiment agrees with the expected result, right? So this is similar to what we saw for percent yield, but this one is gonna be percent error instead. So the percent relative error is the obtained result minus the expected result times 100, right? And so usually this should be a negative value because you'll probably get less than your expected result. When would you get more than your expected result? Well, if you have an interference in your sample matrix that's also adding to the signal, you might overestimate, right, how much you have there and get more than the expected result. But if that interference interferes with the signal and blocks it, then you're gonna have less than the expected result. Right? And this will give you your percent error. Why is this important? You need to think about um, the accuracy that you need to achieve um, within the experimental regime. So when an experimental result is within 1% of the correct result, the analytical method is gonna be considered very highly accurate. Right, methods resulting in relative errors between one and 5% are moderately accurate. And these are mostly acceptable in research areas, right? You wanna be within 5% of a real value. But if you're, you know, worse than 5%, so if you have a relative error that's greater than 5%, this represents a low accuracy procedure and you probably wanna avoid that. Right, so this guy is bad, right, bad news, right? And when you're doing your experiments in the lab, you wanna try to aim for at least moderate, moderately accurate and have a relative error between one and 5%. So what can affect the accuracy? So how accurately the signal is measured during your experiment, this can be up to you. So if you're doing titrimetry and you go over the concentration, then your signal is not gonna be measured very accurately. Um, how accurately the value of K is known from your equation. And then the ease of handling the sample without loss or contamination, right? If you're spilling on the balance or if you lose some solution or have to do multiple steps where you're um, having to uh, maybe use a column to help purify your sample, you're gonna lose some at each of these steps. Okay, so precision then is a measure of the variability when analyzing repeated samples. And it also depends on those factors that affect the relationship between the signal and the analyte. So some of the same situations that affect accuracy can also affect precision, um, but also you can have variability in your instrumentation that causes you to get different measurements every time you measure. And so there may be some inherent variability to your um, instrumentation that will give you a level of precision. All right, so sensitivity is a method's ability to demonstrate that two samples have significantly different amounts of analyte. So if I have sample one and sample, sample two, how much do those two things have to differ so that I can tell them apart with my methodology. This is often confused with the detection limit. 
right? So the detection limit is the smallest amount of the analyte that can be determined with confidence. Okay, so that's a separate measurement from the sensitivity, right? The sensitivity is the change between two samples. And what is the smallest value between those two that I can confidently tell are different? So sensitivity is the change in the signal per unit change in the amount of the analyte. And it's equivalent to the proportionality constant. So this is the sensitivity. So if we have a change in the signal, right? So the big S here is the signal of the analyte that we're using to measure. And then in a total analysis method, we would have change of the moles or grams, whatever our total um, analyte is. And then this value of K is the sensitivity. So this is also a measure of sensitivity. Right, and that is the same K value that we see in our proportionality constant from the last equations. And this is then very similar to what we see for the concentration method. K is still the sensitivity, the S is still the signal of the analyte, but now we have the change of that signal, right? Anytime you see the delta symbol here, that triangle, that means change, right? Change in that signal. Right, so the change in the concentration equals the change in the signal over the K value. So let's look at an example for this, right? So suppose that for a particular total analysis method, the signal measurement of mass using a balance whose smallest increment is plus or minus 0 0.0001 grams, right? So that is the signal change. Right, so this is delta S A is going to be plus or minus 0 0.0001 grams, right? And then if the method sensitivity is 0 0.200, that's going to be our K, right? That's our sensitivity. Then we can calculate um, the difference that we can detect in um, absolute terms in sample, right? So if we calculate this, we should be able to detect two samples that differ by plus or minus 0 0.0005 grams. That's our sensitivity. All right, so how about selectivity? Selectivity of the technique for a specific analyte is also a very important parameter that we need to think about. So this happens if we have interfering components in the sample, we have to be able to evaluate how much that interference is gonna affect the reading, right? So this is a, the signal again, right? But this time it's the signal of our entire sample. So that's gonna include the signal of our analyte, right? That's what we want to detect. And it also, includes the signal of any interference that might be present there. So this could be one or it could be many different signals that we have to add into our equation. So if we know there's interference in there, we have to add them all in, right? And so the sum of those is going to be the total signal or the signal of the sample. And then for each component, you're going to have um, your constant, and the moles of the analyte plus any interference that are in there will also have their own proportionality constant and their own total amount, right? Or total concentration for concentration methods. Essentially the same equation, all right? So the signal of the sample is the total signal due to all the constituents in the sample. So K, uh, the constant for the analyte and the constant for the interference are the sensitivities also. So we talked about sensitivity equaling the K value for the analyte and the interference respectively. And our N and Cs are the moles or the concentration of the interference in the sample. 
So from these values, we can get what's called a selectivity coefficient. So the selectivity of a method for the interference relative to the analyte is defined as the selectivity coefficient. And so this is termed KAI or big K, right? This is the selectivity coefficient. Right, and it is just going to be the uh, sensitivity of the interference or Ki over the sensitivity of the analyte Ka. Right, so these are our proportionality constants that we've been working with the whole time. So these can be positive or negative, right, depending on whether the interference effect on the signal is going to amplify it or be positive or if it's opposite that of the analyte and it takes away from it, makes it negative. All right, so we can get a little bit more complicated now with our equation. We can solve the equation for the Ki, right? So here, right, is going to be equal to the Kai, the big Kai, times Ka, right? So we just rearranged this equation here. And then we can substitute into it the selectivity equation into that, right? So our signal of the sample, right, um, based on our total analysis method is the um, sum of the Ka times the moles of A, right? And then um, it also, let's go back. Right, it's the sum of this guy plus the sum of this guy. But instead, we're going to substitute in the equation, our um, calculation of the KAI based on this rearrangement. Right, so we're going to substitute that in for the KI. Right, and then we can pull the KA out of that equation. Right, so initially our S SAMP would equal the Ka, Ka times the Na plus the Ki times the Ni, right? And if we put in Ka times the Na, and then we put this in for Ki, right? We can put that in the big K-A-I times K-A, right? And then this is next to the N-I, right? We can pull out the term K-A from this part and the K-A from this part, and that gives us this equation here, okay? So we can do that for both the total analysis method and for the concentration method. All right, so let's take an example problem of this. So a method for the analysis of calcium in water suffers from an interference in the presence of zinc when the concentration of calcium is 100 times greater than that of zinc and analysis for calcium gives a relative error of 0.5%. What is the selectivity coefficient for this method? Okay, the selectivity coefficient is this value. All right, so that's what we wanna calculate for this equation. We wanna know what KAI is, All right? So first you have to identify what you need to find. So you need to find KAI is what for this equation? So how do we go about doing this? Okay, so since only relative concentrations are reported, we can arbitrarily assign absolute concentrations to make the calculations a little bit easier for ourselves. So let's say our concentration of calcium is 100 and our concentration of zinc is one, right? So because they're relative to each other, we can say a relative error of 0.5% means that the signal in the presence of the zinc is 0.5% greater than, in, than the signal in the absence of zinc, right? So again, we can assign values to make our calculations easier. So if we're using our, 
our concentrations up here or our signals, we can say in the absence of zinc, we have 100 arbitrary units. And then the signal in the presence of the zinc would be 100.5, right? Because that's our relative error. Okay. And then we can assign values to make the calculation easier. If the signal in the absence of zinc is 100, the signal in the presence is 100.5. Then we can calculate the K calcium using the signal and the concentration of the calcium that we've given in the equation. And this turns out to be 1. Right. And this is just a rearrangement right, of our initial signal of our analyte equals the proportionality constant of our analyte times the concentration of the analyte, right? That was our equation for a relative concentration, right? So if we rearrange this to solve for this one, so um, this is our, in the absence of zinc, in the presence of zinc, however, the signal of the sample we said would be 100.5 because it's 0.5 difference, right? And we know that that's going to be equal to this equation here, right? So it's, it's going to be a combination of the calcium and of the signal from the zinc, the concentration of zinc, and then the, the constant, the proportionality constant or sensitivity of the zinc. Right, so we already calculated our K calcium with our values, right? And we, so that was one. And our concentration of the calcium was 100. And then we don't know the proportionality constant for the zinc, but we said that our arbitrary unit of zinc was one and our signal at that. And so we can solve this equation for that value now. Right. And we get out our value of 0.5. And then we can put that into our selectivity coefficient equation. And it also comes out to be 0 0.5. All right. So things get a little bit complicated when you have interference in there. So next time, we will take a look at the robustness and ruggedness in the next video.